What's up, everybody? All right. Uh, so today's webinar, Zoom, is going to be short and sweet. Uh, party time. See you at new highs. And we'll touch base in a couple of weeks. All right. Good. <laughs> All right. Um, so where do, where do we leave, leave off? Well, again, you guys were on the Tuesday, so uh, we didn't speak Sunday. Um, <clears throat> but basically what changed is um, we got confirmation that the money that knows a hell of a lot more than any of us um, went all in. And that's kind of, I know I've been waiting a long time since uh, last the end of last summer. Um, I haven't done a damn thing outside of try to scalp some shit here and there intraday. Um, I've been a lot more aggressive day trading. I got a nice little fistful of spy exposure. Um, and now I can focus on names. Uh, hopefully, if we ever get a breather, um, which I really don't see happening. I I'll be dead straight with you. I, there, some, there's got to be something. In other words, a headline, something to... Um, get buyers to step away and feel like they're not forced in to buy every, do you, like you guys, you, you, you know what we were talking about Sunday, right? Like we can't get cute here, right? Forget Niners, forget oversold signals, forget all that bullshit. Um, you can't get cute because it all comes down to one thing, right? you got, the smartest money on the street that has taken off an extremely aggressive size hedge in the futures market for whatever reason we have no idea unexpectedly right it wasn't like the, there was capitulation it wasn't like the market rolled over and everybody was hiding under a rock um it was really unexpected to the point where uh, it came actually off a bounce rather than any selling. And at the same time, it pretty much, you pretty much had the same setup because usually what you get is you get Sharpies get in when there's capitulation and nobody owns anything, right? Um, and usually that's also a sell-off. Here, you didn't have a sell-off. Okay, the market actually found a bottom, squeezed off the Fed meeting, but you, you had the same backdrop. Nobody had any exposure. Nobody had anything. Nobody believed the market could rally from, from that point any further. And yet you were still left with Sharpies all in and nobody else, right? So I think that's, it almost gets the same the job done in the same fashion you know and you got a lot of people even off a sharpie signal yeah you know, i remember i was asked this i get asked this all the time you know isn't this signal so widely followed by now doesn't a lot don't enough people know about it but the truth of the matter is it's it's usually when they get aggressive you can't right because we're wired the wrong effing way in this game when they're when they are getting aggressive, for whatever reason, we do not feel good about buying, holding, not shorting. As a matter of fact, that you know, I see more more people around me, you know, on social media or whatever the case, trying to short off the sharpie signal. How about them apples? I see more people trying to short now, the last few days, 
even more so than when the market was selling off prior to that. Yeah. So, I mean, there you go. Right? There you go. So now, what it comes down to, there's, again, what, what I was saying Sunday, you, you don't want to overthink things. You know, you want to be prudent about it. You, you don't want to be stupid about things. But you don't want to try to get too cute. Okay? So whatever it is that you've been waiting for, you know, maybe some of you haven't been waiting for, maybe it doesn't change one bit, right? If you're scalping intraday, maybe you're going to do the same thing. I know for me, it's changed everything, right? Everything. Um, not only as far as holding overnight, um, but even on an intraday. Like the, the last two days, I've been more aggressive day trading, thanks to the sweeper activity as well, than I've been combined over the past six months. Combined. You know what I mean? Like this morning, I had a basket of every shit company under the sun of sweeper activity, which I would have never done a week ago. So for me, it changes a lot, right? For some of you, may not may not change a thing. But one thing you will learn, it might be the hard way, is that the dumbest thing you could do is think you're smarter than the signal, right? Especially if like you're a steam room member, okay? Not buying because you don't feel comfortable is one thing. You know, you're going to short into a Sharpie signal. You need your fucking head examined. Plain and simple. Like the audacity for you to even do something like that. You know, so anyway, what we what we need to do now, I'll tell you what I what I've done anyway. Um, I got a nice chunk of spy exposure now. I had um, a starter piece prior, as most of you know. Um, I've added to that. I added yesterday. I added a little this morning. So now I got a nice uh, handful. Um, June's for now. Um, I've been playing, you know, everything from, I mean, what I play today? SoFi, MTTR, uh, Fubo. Uh, what was the other piece of crap that I played today? So it was so, so you, you guys know hood hood. Thank you, Ray hood. That got bombarded. That was it hood. Um, and I, I mean, I even played some of the big guys, which I, I rarely do just cause you know, the more expensive names, you really got to feel good about a move or at least a bottom is in for you to try to play the equity of a $300 stock, $400 stock when there's little guys moving all over the place. But, you know, I, I when I'm being aggressive, I'm going to do it anyway. So I played Netflix today. Um, I played Apple a little today. Uh, we played, we played everything. I played TNA today. I played TQQQ today. So I basically from we had like a little a little breather in the morning, um, if you guys remember. I just it was more like chop than anything else, um, and out of that, um, you know, we, we owned a lot of things. We owned a lot of things, but you, you guys, like I said in the room, you guys don't get it. I I'm a caged animal. I don't think you understand that. You know what I mean? I've literally, literally been in a cash position and in a conservative frame of mind since the end the late summer of, of last year. And yeah, maybe that's not a lot of time for, for some of you guys. A degenerate like myself, that's that's a lot, that's a lot of time. You know, that's a lot of time. And the reason being, okay, the reason being that 
there were several reasons but that we talked about on each webinar. The breath was awful in the markets. Flow was awful in the markets. Sharpies were max hedged, the complete opposite they are now. So I just couldn't get myself to roll the dice on anything and get aggressive on anything because every aspect of the smart money in this game that I follow was doing the total opposite. So why would I, you know, why would I do different? Right. And now that's changed plain and simple. Now that's changed. Right. I mean, it's, it's obvious it's changed. The flow look, has looked different. You know, I don't call it a coincidence. You know, the flow starts to look different. The price action looks different. Everything, everything, you know? So, um, but that's that's the main difference. Uh, Spy, yeah, oh, no, no, I don't know. Right now I have no calls um, as far as individual names are concerned. Zero, nothing yet, nothing yet. So now I'm hoping um, that I, I have a decent chunk of spy exposure that I can focus now on individual names um, and work from there, you know? But Tim, I'll be dead straight with you. Like I, I got smoke coming out of my ears at the end of the day, but I really don't mind what we have right now where I have spy, so let this market gap up and chop and do whatever it wants, right? I, I have exposure to that. And if we continue to see days like today, where the indexes chop around for most of the day, but individual names that are catching aggressive sweeper activity can go bonkers, I, I, don't, even, I don't even mind not swinging individual names if the action is going to be like it is today. I go, why? You know, for, for what reason? You know, for what reason? So I, I, don't, I don't mind it. Now, if we do get a breather, right, or we get um, a little rinse or something to that effect, and, you know, we start to see maybe the market slow down a little bit, and they start finding individual names that uh, we start to find appealing, that's, you know, with time, obviously, because that's what I'm looking to swing time. And that's, that's the other thing. Like, you know, I'm not sold off, off the action we're seeing in these names that I want to ho own hood for the next two quarters. You understand? I wanted to own hood this morning of all the weekly and front month flow that was coming in because it, it had to create momentum. You know what I mean? It had to create momentum. So when this action starts eventually to slow down, you know, and you see less of this chase and momentum type action, um, you're going to see more of stock picking out there. You know, right now, and we're not even in chase mode yet. We're, we're at the start of it. We're at the start of it. You know what I mean? Um, right now, again, you got a signal that the uh, money in the futures market, that their job is to hedge risk, have removed their hedges. They have removed their hedges. Okay? And at the same time that that has happened, hedge funds are net short and have de-risked significantly. CTAs, maybe they're flat now, but we're net short going into the past couple of days. Brokerage firm clients from Goldman to Bova to major brokerage firms have no exposure to equities, risk on equities, nothing. Right. Riff raff spec money in the futures market, the opposite of the smarter money, they're net short. 
So what's going to happen here? Okay, what's going to happen? The market's going to come down and they're all going to cash a ticket on the short side or the market's going to come down enough to where they made the right move and they're going to find a better entry? Possible. Possible. But the more likely scenario is that any little dip, any little dip is going to be soaked right up because of all the money that needs to put on exposure in equities. That's why you see these intraday fades and they get soaked up. And not only soaked up, you blink and it's new highs. Okay, another thing that has changed, and not to get too market technical with you guys, but we were in a negative, negative gamma environment for most of the correction, okay? That has changed now. We're in a positive gamma environment. So what dealers need to do to hedge is buy dips, right? So now you got dealers, you got CTAs, you got hedge funds, you got private clients, you got spec money in the futures market, all that need to put on at least some exposure because they have nothing. And the further this market runs away from them, the further they're going to have to scramble to put on exposure. Okay? It doesn't, it doesn't have to translate into a chase and a melt up. It could. Okay? It doesn't have to. But what's more than likely to happen is all these little dips on we see, you know, whatever it is. There may be news coming out of Russia, Ukraine, and you get a gap overnight to the downside. There's a high probability they buy the living shit out of that. You know what I mean? So that's, that's, that's where we're at right now. That's where we're at right now. Okay. And, you know, it, it's, it's a tricky environment for us because once you put on some, you know, once we put on some exposure and the fun, you know, has fizzled out a little bit of the excitement off the signal. No, you know, we, we want to make more money. We're never satisfied. Right. And even though we're earlier than most, we we want entries, right? We're looking for spots of entry. Do we chase? Do we wait for weakness? You know, so it's not the easiest easiest trade after the initial the initial excitement. You know, that's why initially what you want to do you get you want to get long, right? You want to lean bullish, right? You take those that that whatever bearish bias you have and you flush it down the fucking toilet bowl. It's over with now. Kaput. Okay? None of you know shit. I don't know shit. Okay? You're not going to figure out the Ukraine saga. You're not going to figure out the Fed issue. Okay? Don't waste your brain cells. It's not going to happen. Okay? You don't know more than... uh, uh, about the interest rates and a soft landing than anybody in the Fed or any real player on the street for that matter, and they can't figure it out. You know, so why why would you even bother? Why would you even bother unless you got that chip on your shoulder and the mark is going to knock that chip right off, whether you like it or not? So that's the easy answer is you lean bullish, you look for opportunities, right? Less risk, you're looking for short-term intraday opportunities, market sells, market fades, you're looking for entries rather than trying, right? 
if you were if you play both sides, you were looking to ride the momentum on the downside prior to the signal. Now that changes. Without a doubt, Dwayne, with that, you have to look yourself in the mirror and admit that you not only don't know shit, will never know shit when it comes to this game. And that's the God's honest truth. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how much work you put in. I don't care how much homework you do. There are plenty of players smarter than you. And they don't know shit. You know, and that's that's what you know. That's what burns a lot of doing. Right? That's what burns a lot of people in this game, right? The price action is doing one thing, and you know, because of a bias, they they think they know something different, just based off emotion. And that's it. Whoa, that's the other thing. Like your bread, you're talking, Brandon. Do you see like the noise around us? I got a fucking migraine from this inversion shit. Like I, half the people that are talking about this shit don't even know what the fuck they're talking about with this inversion of the yield curve. They have no clue what it means, what what it represents. You know what I mean? Why would it be buried? They just, boom, they're pumping it down people's throat, scaring the shit out of everybody as the market goes, tion. And I'm not saying I know. I'm not saying I know, you know, what, what it necessarily means, but I'm not going to pretend I know either. You know what I'm saying? That That's the main difference. I'm not going to pretend to know. Like, especially the economy we're in right now, with all the Fed has done and trying to unwind, nobody has a clue how any of this is going to... And I hate to say nobody... Any, but nobody we know and have access to has the slightest clue how this is going to play out. They may sound like they do on Twitter. They have no fucking clue. Trust me. No clue. And they probably don't have two nickels to rub together either. All right? So here, here's, here's everything we just basically mentioned. Okay? Hedge funds, again, there are smart hedge funds out there. There are successful hedge funds out there. When they are on one side of the boat, it's usually the other side that plays out. Right? So they got aggressively long here. It was going to be really hard for this market to really find any follow through and sustain an uptrend. Right, because they were already long, aggressively. Bonds are gonna gotta 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 come from somewhere else, okay. And if something happens where they need to sell, more than likely it's gonna weigh on the price action, okay. It has, and now they are net short down here, okay, with the market going in the other direction right now. Okay, that's the significance of it. And again, this doesn't matter until the market starts bucking the other way, right? It's all fine and dandy until the market starts moving against them. Because they manage money. They can't just watch. They can only watch for so long, right? So that's hedge funds. Here are CTAs. Like you look, they, you talk about de-risking. There's, there's nothing here. They got no long exposure at all. Here's the S&Ps, right? They were short, okay? Look, look in the past, like they are usually long, fully long riding trends, okay? It's fine, they took off risk. It was a good move for a couple months, but now the market's moving against them, okay? They are not gonna say, oh, we're gonna spit on this rally and not get involved. They can't. That's not how they function, okay? So what they need to do is when the market starts to move 
and the and volatility starts to move in an, uh, the other direction, they have no choice but to take up their explosion numbers. Okay, no emotion. They have no choice. So they're going to be adding exposure here. They're going to be adding exposure here, and they're going to be adding exposure here. Right? This is uh, what you call it, currencies. Okay, so that's CTAs, hedge funds. CTAs they follow trends, systematic, systematic funds. Khalib. Oh, uh, Frank, I have it somewhere. I think I posted it somewhere last week. This is riffraff, as we call them. So this is the opposite of the sharp hedger money in the futures market. Okay? Like the most of us, when things are going up more than, you, you know, usually they like to get long, like us, and ride the uptrend. Sometimes get a little too aggressive on the long side when when things feel easy, okay? This was the first test and they are short, okay? So they're not long either. Goldman clients, okay? Goldman Sachs, their clients. This is equity exposure positioning in an indicator for Goldman clients extremely light positioning. They have nothing. Bova bull bear indicator, okay? Again, you've seen this buy signal. If you've been following this indicator uh, at some of the, mo the most significant lows in market, in your market career, okay? But, for whatever reason, because of everything going on in the world and a bear market under the hood in stocks, like, you know, the, the indices are going down for a couple months. Stocks have been in, in a bear market since last year, right? So it took a toll, okay? And unusual because you usually get a bull signal off capitulation in this, similar to Sharpies, but here's your bull signal. And the majority, the makeup of this indicator is based off positioning. Okay. And if you look at Bova clients, I don't have it here. They are long staples, bank loans, and some other shit that has nothing to do with equities. Excuse my French. Okay. So what they do own has nothing to do with risk on or equities. Staples, the only equities, they're defensive. Right. Um, there's some other significant things going on here that you know people are starting to talk about, but could have been playing a big part. Okay. You got Russia invading Ukraine has sent, you know, not just those areas, but all of Europe into a tizzy. You had mass exodus out of the European markets. You had capitulation in the European markets, no doubt about it. Okay, players capitulated in Europe. And because of inflation, you have nowhere for that money to go, right? Where could it go? Whether you like you where whether you're crazy about US stocks or not, right? You think they're fully valued or whatever the case may be. The threat of inflation and because of what's going on in Ukraine, right? You take Europe out of the equation. You can't go in bonds. You can't go in cash. There's nowhere else for money to go. There's no other options, right? So what you're seeing as a last resort, <laughs> you're seeing money pouring into US markets, right? Coming out of bonds, they came out of Europe. And they've been coming into the States, right? And this kind of the onshore or offshore basket, you know, tell like, look, right? Just in case you didn't think that was happening. Ooh. And that also, if it's sustained, oh, here's bonds. 
right? So look at this, right? You haven't seen what we what we we've been seeing in the bond market. You're talking about ages. You know, one of the strongest bull markets ever has been in the bond market. If that cracks, and we just went over the point where where else can money go? You know, you're going to get huge rotation. I'm talking about major, major rotation out of fixed income and into the equity markets. Okay. And, you know, I haven't seen anything of, you know, of that magnitude probably in my career. The only thing that resembled it was this back here. This is a stock bond ratio, by the way. Okay. And, you know, it set off a ridiculous move in equities. Where same thing, people felt equities were fully valued. They weren't too appealing, but money was coming out of the bond market and going into equities. Okay. So again, that's, that's even, that's just, you know, it's a, almost like a wild card here in, in, to, you know, as far as a backdrop is concerned. You know, that, that's an added kicker. It's not like the market can't rally or can't do well without it. Um, but, it, you know, it's big enough to pay attention to right now. It's big enough to pay attention to. Okay? So everything else to me, everything else is, is useless information. Okay, what do, you want, what, what do we want to talk about? We want to talk about um, whether the Fed is going to put us into recession. We were holding on, this, on these webinars, right? We said back then, as soon as you start hearing on your television about the Fed is going to put us into recession, right? That's likely the end of this awful market we have in individual names and stocks. Remember we were talking about that? As soon as they say the R word and you start to notice it on that box that you have in front of you every day. Right, that's, that's it. Like, this, this is not new, right? We were, well, everybody was concerned of how they were gonna land this plane. The Fed has a bad track record. You know, the market, has been factoring that in. That's why you've seen growth stocks 70% off their effing highs. You know? Why do you think these growth stocks have been massacred? I mean, I'm talking about debacles out there, crashes out there. Crashes. So anything we hear out of the Fed, right now, anything, we, we have known about it, already have heard about it. This market's been factoring it in. You know, that's why this market doesn't care about it right now. It's old news. You know, so that's the market always, right? You hear it all the time. The market always looks ahead, okay? The reasons why the market is rallying don't listen to CNBC. They're not, gonna, they're not telling you the reason why the market's rallying today. The market's rallying today based off what it's trying to factor in and price in that it sees in the future, not what it's, what's the news today. When you and I are reading any piece of news that we get our hands on in real time, it's useless. Every one of us have access to that news. There's no edge in, in any of that. You know, now, there are immediate reactions, right? Sometimes you get the market uh, initially will sell off on a headline. But why do you think there are times where that weakness instantly gets bought up and the market turns from red to green? And other times, you know, the market just keeps selling and there's not a bottom in sight. It's because the market's not paying attention to any of that shit. Oh, so we will 
as this rally continues, we, we will find out why the market is ignoring the quote unquote, all the bad news right now, why Sharpies have removed their hedges. We're going to find, we're going to find that out, but likely at that point, it's late. It's late. So again, that's, that's why I take, I, I, I have the mentality of where there's, there's no reason for me to, to think, right, about these things and rack my brain, okay? I have signals that I have conviction and confidence in, right? I have the confidence that they are looking at the market the right way and not the way I just explained to you. And when I start to see these signals flash, either bullish or bearish, I'm going to plan and react accordingly. You know, and that's all I can control. That's all I can control. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and try to figure out why these signals could be flashing bullish or bearish. You know, and again, there, there are things we got to steer a little bit here and there, right? We, we got up, I mean, 11 straight days or whatever it is, right? You know, you put on some exposure, put on some risk. You're up for a couple of days. You got a little bit cushion. Maybe you want to chill out and see. You could get a little digestion. You you want to use your brain, right? We want to be. We want to look. We want to use common sense. We don't want to be ridiculous and just buy every day blindfolded. So we we got to steer the wheel a little bit. But you know if you know if you're if you're looking at it the right way, it's not as difficult as, as it sounds. You know? In. Get get that chip off your shoulder, right? And again, I'm talking more for members than anything else. You get that chip off your shoulder, right? You remind yourself that the players out there are, are who are positioned in the futures market who know a lot more than you are on one side right now aggressively. And you have to lean towards to that side, whatever it may be. You have to lean to that side. And even if you do that, right, you, you may run into losers. You may lose some money, but you should end up making the right decisions and avoid the travesties, at least. Avoid the travesties. But that, that's, that's it in, in a nutshell. You know, that's it. And like, Lord, you know, you and I have been talking on these webinars, right? Like, are, are we going to try to figure out a bottom in these growth stocks where we don't have the slightest idea? We thought we, we thought these things were going to bottom months ago. They were oversold, right? Months ago. We had, I had no idea why these things kept bleeding out. No idea what they were trying to factor in. All right. So what do you do? It's not, you're not copying it. How do you, you, you take the frame of my way, you say, okay, when we get signs that the smarter money out there is willing to take some risk and remove some of that aggressive hedge position that they have, that's when that's when I'll start to look to buy these things and play these things. All right? When they feel that some of the, some of the risk that they were concerned about is off the table. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, we're, we're, we're lost in space. You know, and again, you can pretend, we can pretend that we have an idea about these things. We can pretend, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, but I'm saying, Lord, you at least, you know, a lot of people, they just, I, I hate the, it's not the word arrogant. It, it's, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, stubborn, maybe stubborn. You know, stubborn, because they... They are intelligent, you know, they know the game, but that, that doesn't make you, you know, it's not what makes you money in this. Yeah. It's, it's, it's even more than overthinking it though. You know, it's, it's even more than overthinking it. They think, they think they know that's, that's what it is, Matt. Yeah. And in reality, you know, it's almost like they're embarrassed to admit they're embarrassed to be humble. Right, exactly, exactly, exactly. 
exactly that. You know, and you see some of the, you know, the sharpest minds out there, they they get bit in the ass eventually when they get that chip on. Yeah, you know what I mean? They get a chip on their shoulder from being right to where they get stubborn. And, you know, if they're managing money, it knocks you out of the game. Like analysts, you know, a lot of times they'll bounce back from it. Right. And you see like Kalanovich, who was taking a lot of heat, you know, just very quietly told you to keep buying the dip and call the bottom in growth that yielded already 100% bounces in some of these names. So, I mean, that's all, honestly, I, I'm, I don't want to go in, I'm not going into a rant about it. I'm just trying to get you guys to see, um, to see the logic, the logic in it. You know, just to see the logic in it. That's all. Just to see the logic in it. You know, at least see the logic in in what um in in what I'm seeing in it. In what I'm seeing in it. You know, and and you can if you pay attention, you could see um you, you see already we see the risk appetite is changing, even just the past couple of days, you know, just this week, the two days. Yeah, right. The flow, like they, I mean, they were they, they weren't buying any of these names. We see uh, some spec action, a couple of these growth names, but we wouldn't see them just nonstop on auto buy like this. You know, they were doing it in like energy and stuff like that, right? That's where most of it has been. Oh, even the indexes, right? Like we weren't seeing this. You know, we weren't seeing this. And I got news for you guys. You guys know, like Norris and Matt, you guys know when these big guys really need to start chasing, you know, I mean, you're going to, you're going to see flow, like, forget it. And we haven't seen in ages because they've been taking down risk. You know, when you, when you start to see this, this hedge fund indicator here, right? Start to move north like this, you know, kind of like this over here. When, you, when they come from net short and they got to add exposure, you're going to see bombs. You're going to see bombs as far as option bets are concerned, especially like ETFs and some of the bigger names. You know? and, and we don't, I, honestly, ideally, we don't even want that, guys, right? You guys know you were around the COVID lows, right? You want that non-believer backdrop environment, exactly. You want it to last as long as possible. That's why, you know, a lot of times we just want to make money. We want the market to go up every single day, uh, 10 straight days. Bigger picture, you, we don't want that. We don't want that. That COVID low, okay? The, the way that, that COVID low set up, was ideal. You look back on it, it looks like a total V, right? A total V. But if you remember going through it, living through it, these, all these little, these drops here, all these little drops, right? People were suicidal. They thought the end of the world was on the way. And these things were being gobbled up, each and every one of them. So it kept all that money that we're seeing now on the sidelines, right? They didn't believe. And you know, eventually they came in later on into, where, into these highs, right? These here. We, well, you had a crash back then. That's why you had capitulation. You had a crash, that was a crash, you know? This, this was more like, it wasn't even the, the indexes that people were worried about. It was the individual names that they were, that they've been tortured in for months. You know, they've been tortured in for months. Like if they, anybody who's been buying the dip in some of these Kathy names, I mean, they've been annihilated, right? Any of these hedge funds, any of these funds, Anybody who had positions in these growth names 
and continue to add on the way down, you know, they capitulation, forget it. They've been capitulated and then some. Well, you, it, again, it's just, it's a lot of people. I mean, it's a lot of players, you know? It's a lot of players. And, you know, you look at a, a chart of the S&P 500, you know, this it doesn't do it justice. You know, this is fun. You, had, you finally had the markets crack a little bit, but you had names down 80% off the highs, 80%. So obviously I'm excited. I'm not, and it's not even just about excited right now. Like granted, I'm excited. I've had fun the past couple of days, even just day trading a lot of these names because um, the action's been solid. We have earnings coming up. Usually I hate earnings season. I still hate earnings season, but I think we're going to, we're going to learn a lot um, from this earnings season. You know, I think we're going to get some real answers. Like you're going to see a lot of names um, like miss earnings, right? Because earnings aren't, aren't going to be as good. Supposedly that's what the expectation is, but you got growth names that have already been terrorized, right? So you see a name that's down initially off earnings that's already been selling for the past few months and they buy that, you know what I'm saying? They buy that weakness and all of a sudden you have red to green scenarios or whatever the case, they even just hold up better. So that's good indication that the, there's a high probability that this low that they just made is going to hold for a bit, you know? Because a lot of, I mean, simple English is telling you that that negative news is factored in. You know, it's factored in. So there, there's a lot to pay attention to. Uh, but now we got now we got the green light. Okay, the, what, the, what's different here is we got the green light on the overall climate. That's the difference. Like I don't know about you guys, what, what I was worried about, and this is something we spoke about a lot. OK, you had names that were destroyed. OK, even solid growth names that were 50 percent off the highs. But, you know, you had a market that is just starting to roll over. Right. And we don't know when this is likely to end. OK, so how is a name again? I'm just throwing names out there like Twilio or Amazon or any name that you follow that you think there's value there, you see an opportunity there, how is that name going to buck the trend to the upside if the overall indices still have downside, right? The risk reward isn't worth it. It's not worth sticking your neck out and getting aggressive in any of those names without having any conviction that at least some of the selling is done in the, in the overall market. Okay, so what Sharpies ha have done for us now is they gave us a signal that, okay, the, the brunt of the selling, the stuff we were concerned about in the overall market is behind us. And now we could start, you know, now we could seriously start to look and 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 see how uh, sweeper you know how sweepers are positioning in these names. Okay, again, short term, long term, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whatever your heart desires. Yes, exactly, and that's exactly what changed. Right, the same thing. Like I got deja vu. You're right. I uh, I don't know how COVID's going to turn out. Right? You remember everyone became a fucking scientist and a doctor overnight into the COVID lows? Oh, this is going to happen. Oh, this, we're not going to have a vaccine till this. We're not going to, uh, cities are going to be on lockdown for this long. Everybody had answers. Everybody had answers why not to buy stocks into the COVID lows. Okay? The only answer that we had that mattered was while well, everybody had no exposure and spit up their exposure in the equity market, Sharpies did the opposite, right? So you had Sharpies take off hedges. They were hedged on the way down. They removed it into the COVID lows. 
right? The bova bull air, bull, bull, uh, b- b- too many bees. The bova bull bear indicator, which measures positioning, okay? Flash the bullish signal near those COVID lows, right? Signaling that a lot of money came out of equities. And again, the, the likelihood is there's not a lot of selling left. This exactly, they're still talking about COVID. I can't, I can't believe my eyes sometimes on this Twitter what people talk about. They talk about the same thing they've been talking about the past four years, like people like people care. They're still talking about Trump, some of these people. You know, so that's that, but that all kidding aside, that's the only thing that changed for a lot of us when the markets bottomed off COVID. I was shitting my pants. New York the streets of Manhattan where you saw tumbleweeds going by. You never seen anything like it in your life. Who knew how that was going to turn out? I had not the slightest clue how that was going to turn out. You know, so, but Praveen's right. That's, that's exactly how we got to, we, we need to treat this now. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't be afraid of weakness now. Okay, don't be afraid of weakness. That's the other thing I want. I want to make sure I was telling you guys. What I'm trying to do, um, I'm trying to, you know, it's not that difficult, but I'm trying to make sure that I have enough powder, dry powder, if I do get lucky and get some sort of dip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it, so... Keeping exactly, keeping the chains moving, trading, right? Like you see, like I'm saying, I got some spy exposure, right? If the market continues higher, eventually there's going to be a little breather. That's the inevitable. It's not going to go up for 55 straight days in a row. You know what I mean? There's going to be a shakeout. So until we get that, I, I have some spy exposure. Now, you know, I'm tactically trading names that, now we have some real action and some real momentum in. You know, even again, you option players. There's some serious mom. There's some serious momentum out there. You know, and and tactical doesn't have to be in day trading. Like you know, some of you guys played TQQQ yesterday and sold it today. You know, that's tactical, right? You could have held it, right? You could have held it. Um, a few more days, but you made a nice hit overnight, ping pong boom, pocket that money, right? Especially if you have some overall market exposure, pocket that money, like whoever just said that, and then wait for a little dip to find an entry into something else. Yeah, you that's what you're gonna need. Um, you're gonna need. An overnight sell-off, Damien. That's that's basically what you're gonna need. You know what I mean? You need the pajama crew to get it started. Cause during the during market hours, it's gonna be really difficult. You got you just got you got too many, too many, too much big money underexposed here. So they're 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 gonna look to implement money on any dip. So you need. Um, you need something to happen overnight where the pajama crew gets some selling going, right? It's a lot easier that way. Thin markets, and you get a little gap down, and and that and that happens for now, anyway. Because, like I said, eventually you're going to get a rest, even if it's you know uh, sideways chop. Um, you know what I was looking at? I was looking at last night just to to get an idea. Um, like I remember, like 2011 was similar to where, and look how that played out. Uh, just kind of something like possibly hoping for here, but maybe I got high hopes. Look at this watch. Uh, here it is. Okay. So I don't know. It just it felt very familiar. This guy. So you see this here. Okay. You had bottom, right? Here's the Niner, very similar to what we have now. Okay, market continue to push, then chopped around here a little bit. Then you had this that was a gift from the gods. Yeah, that was the last gift from the gods here. 
So, you know, you finally had some, some players giving up and chasing. And, you know, this, this got a little stretched here. And you get this little spill that shook out everybody and their mother. And that was it. You know, that was it. Um, and 2011 was I'm telling you, I don't know if you guys remember 2011. It had some spookiness to it. And that was the government shutdown bullshit. But the market looked like it was, you know what it was? I think 2008 wasn't too far away. So we already were still black and blue from that. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you want, though. That's what you want. You know what I'm saying? That's what you want. You want that when you get the dip, all the bears and even the bulls are, oh, here we go. The upside finally ran out of gas. Here's the leg down. You don't want it to get to where everybody is feeling that bullish that the dip doesn't get that job done. You understand? You want people to still have that bearish feeling in them. Uh, but this this is exactly like this is the blueprint right here. If we could have our way, and it's very similar. It's very similar. Like yo, know, straight out rip, and then kind of stuck here, right? Just in case anybody was looking to short it initially, bang them up a little bit, and just like I don't know, we had a little bloop 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 bloop, and you know that's where you got to be ready. That's what I mean with like dry powder. You want to save some dry powder for that for that um i don't know seasonality you know what it is seasonality you got two things seasonality is usually strong now okay but there's a but midterm uh, election years uh usually the rally fizzles in april so it it doesn't last as long yeah and then you got the sell in may go away nonsense right so we we just want we don't want to we, we don't want a situation where things get too bulled up too quick and then we see um sharpies starting to put hedges back on and we're kind of stuck in a spot like oh what the hell do we do here you know we want to see like you're saying Praveen, we want to see little dips where if Sharpies added, you know, if they took off, like here, let me give you an example, right? You know what I'm talking about, but let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So you, cause I can't explain it. Watch. So, oh. Okay, so we, this would be the easier route if we could have our way. Uh, Okay. Okay. So you see this? That, right? To where, you know, you get these dips and they're constantly getting into all in territory. Right? What what gets tricky is, well, this is not even not even on here, but the quicker they get initially like you you just don't want that right away because then you really you don't have a an idea you're lost like this this signal is no use anymore it's not necessarily bearish but it just it has no use anymore if they get fully hedged 2018 analog yeah this is it right here 2018 oh you're talking about the overall market now 2018, well, 2018 analog, if that plays out here, which is kind of off already, but if it did, you would have the market come down here, hang out for a little bit, and then roll over one more time. I... May I mean you you don't have the you don't have sentiment and positioning where you need it to be 2018. You have nobody in stocks, Al. You understand? You have nobody like 
bull, like the bull with bull bear indicator, you didn't get a bull signal to the capitu capitulation lows in 2018. Sharpies, you didn't get a bull signal to the lows in 2018. You understand what I'm saying? Like people were still bullish in 2018 before the market rolled over. They were calling for a Santa rally. I remember like it was yesterday. Everybody was all bulled up calling for a Santa rally. Yeah, that's another thing, Tipa. Listen, me included, you, everybody else, we wanted capitulation, right? How do you screw everybody? Don't give them capitulation. Simple. Again, the same job was done without capitulation. We all wanted capitulation, okay? But even without capitulation, nobody's in equities. You understand? Nobody's in equities. Yeah, I did. You're right. I started talking about it too much, and apparently so did everybody else. Yeah, and they had a place to hide there too. You're right. Commodities. Now, you know, see, and, and here's the thing with like commodities and stuff. It's going to be interesting here, right? Oil, all that. If this market goes into risk on mode, it's going to be really interesting. All these people hiding out in commodities. It's going to be really interesting. Right? Usually you want to catch that big trade and just sit through it. You're going to have to go through some pain, and this might be uh, the pain for commodities. You know, if you're looking to hold through this. Uh, that, that, was the, that was the issue, right, we were talking about? Even though I, I like all these names, but I, I don't I, I I'm different. I can't sit through uh, all that. You know, I was, I was better off no matter what. Um, especially that some of these names, like you said, so some of these things already went bananas. Um, but waiting, waiting for risk on to come back into the picture here and and starting to play that way. S E, you like S E? A M D is a stud. Like honestly, guys, the names I don't, I don't. I don't really have a preference or anything. I'm, I'm, you know, any of these I'll be willing to play, um, you know, at the right spot, the right action. Fubo, I, I played it for a squeeze today. I just, I don't know. You know, it wasn't like today's action, Dean, wasn't a, a fund out there calling bottom in Fubo. They were just playing a squeeze. Same thing in like this hood, yeah, hood. And I played them both. You know what I mean? I played them both. Um, but it wasn't the action. That's not the action that calls bottom. In other words, like, if you want to see bottom flow in these names, what you're going to see is you're going to see more than likely Hood or uh, Fu Fubo down on a particular day, right? Or even playing dead, doing nothing. And you start to see somebody coming in accumulating a position with time and the stock doesn't do anything. You can't benefit it from day trading at all. You understand? There's no interest. And in the meantime, while you don't have an interest, somebody is, you know, a fund out there is accumulating a position. So that's, that's, it's different, you know? So it depends on what you're looking for. Like if you're looking to trade hood, you know, you want to catch your move and get out of it. Like a lot of you are playing front month or weeklies. You want the action you saw today. Okay. Because if somebody comes in and buys um, uh, February hood calls, you're probably not going to get a day trade out of it. You need this action that came in today to see this type of momentum. Like you saw the action today. Honestly, they, you know, the premium in these things, they were paying what, 30 cents, 20 cents. But it was just rapid fire, one after the other, after the other. You understand? So for a day, what the hell did I just do? For a day trade, you just want to get in the middle of that. That's all you're looking to do, right? Get in the middle, raise a stop. Look, look at this. This is, 
Kuku. And Fubo, you know, was a lot slower. Um, and I got a little extra help from uh, Ponytail. Um, what's his name? Nigerian. Talked about the action here. Give me a little boost to sell into. Uh, but same thing, you know, if this thing catches some dated action, you're not going to get this type of momentum intraday. But it could be real flow. And, you know, if you're looking to build a position, that's what you want to see. Um, but what other names? Like Shop caught um, some leap buying yesterday. That's real action. Shop. Uh, they've been buying some of the, the, the real names. You know, some of the real names out there. Uh, the real buying. Uh, Shop, uh, Google, right? Those names have been catching some action. Uh, what else could I? Oh, Netflix. Did you guys play Netflix today at all? Anybody play Netflix? Yeah? I played the stock too. I mean, I wish I would have played Call. The stock is a lot more expensive. Um, but you saw, all right, multiple sweeps. We haven't seen Netflix action in a long time, no? When's the last time we saw like Netflix sweeps? It's been a while, hasn't it? I almost forgot about the stock. So, you know, this is what I mean. Like if you're interested in this name, if you see some accumulation down here, you know, even if the stock is not doing much short term, that's what you want to see. Look at Tesla, like Tesla. You see Tesla, the way they bombed Tesla? Forget now. I'm not talking about the last couple of days. I'm talking about when it was seeing that December, those December missiles and stuff. Right? That was over here. Where was that? Here or here? Here? Here, right? Yeah, it must have been there. The Ron Barron sweeps. Yeah, he probably had um, those December missiles, probably had uh, the split news. 224, good call, Matt. Let's see, 224. That's literally into the lows, Matt. Is that nuts? <laughs> That's right here. God help us. Five million. Rat bastards, all this. Speaking of rat bastards, you saw the, uh, you guys saw it. We talked about it in the room. Sean, you saw the Nielsen? That guy is a rat bastard. That's a legitimate rat bastard. You come in two minutes before the close. Like, come on now. You know? And, you know, honestly, the two reasons why I even like notice it to mention it one was there was hardly any action that day right very selective buying and two you know there was there's some chatter around the name it turned down the bid and stuff like that so obviously it's been a target and the point i'm making is you come in two minutes before the close like this name has been a target as a buyer Hey, you gotta, you gotta make it look good at least. These guys don't even try to make it look good anymore. They don't even try to make it look good. Like they're not afraid of anything. One thirty-five exit at four. Huh? <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, huh? I'm telling you, you guys think I'm exaggerating? It was two minutes before the close. Watch. Two minutes. Where is it here? I didn't even know they got bought out. I saw Ani post it here. Okay, this was the order right here. Where's the time? Here, less than two minutes. I, but I don't understand how they get away with it. I really don't. I really don't. He has to get questioned, he or she, has to. I told you guys the story, I got questioned. Immediately. You know, unless they got some sort of loophole, they must have a loophole or something. Because to make it this obvious, you know, it, it just, like why, 
Why did you buy that 1558 guy? Right? What train, right? What'd you see at 1558? Like he didn't even want to buy it earlier in the day just in case the stock was going to be down that day. He was that petty. A little pica, right? He didn't even want, just in case there was a little downside intraday, he wanted no piece of it. <laughs> These guys. Right. <laughs> Mercury retro. Oh, Lord. Yeah, that's pretty crazy, though. All right, let's uh, let's talk about a few names here, and then uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, you know, keep your eyes on all the growth names, especially off action. Microsoft had some nice uh, May buying. There's been an uptick in Microsoft, um, period, period. You know, period. Uh, a lot of these bigger names, they've already come after. Apple too, right? Google, we spoke about. Look at this, like Apple's at new highs. Oh, you know, you know the other thing I noticed too? I don't know if you guys follow it. And I don't even know if it's what I think it is, okay? But look at this. Because I, I saw a write-up too. You guys see I've been posting the insider buying because there's been a shitload of insider buying in a lot of these names. But look at this. Uh, oh. That's not what I... Hold on, huh? Okay. This is the NASDAQ um, insider, insider buying index. This is at new highs. This is a new high, a new high already. You know, it's usually a leading, usually a leading um, index. Right? And NQ is obviously not at new highs. Look at that. Crazy, huh? QQQ, maybe that's a little, no, same shit. So if you want to follow it, uh, just type in um, insider buy. It Because I can't, I just find, just on the NASDAQ, I can't find the other one. There's two of them here. See, total index, and I don't know the difference between them, but they're both at new highs here. The insiders, there's a lot of insider buying, Sal, in um, some of these NASDAQ names. They believe. They believe, you know, some of these names, I still couldn't buy them. You're talking about the shit of the shit out there. But what the hell do I know? Uh, would I even care about short-term center? You know, the thing, and that's what I was saying Sunday, like trying to be cute. You got like, every bottom, right? We spoke about this Sunday. Every, like, if you look, and I'll give you an example. Every bottom of a correction we've come out of, every single one, okay, you'll see that all those mean reverting, short-term tactical indicators always go to sell signal, okay, always off the first rally. So like this, COVID lows, okay? Every short-term indicator into this niner was as hot as a pistol. Every one. You had sell signals to every one. Okay? Now, if if Sharpies, if I don't have that signal, I'd be concerned. I Honestly, I wouldn't even be day trading. That's how concerned I'd be. I'd, I'd wait for a rinse. Because, again, I'm not, I don't have a Sharpie signal, right? We didn't see capitulation. I'm convinced that we're stuck in a range at best. You understand? The reason now that I wouldn't get too hung up on it is because if this was a bottom and this market's running away from players who are underexposed, you know, this you run through Niners all the time. It's it, like, look, it's not unusual. You know, like, look. This market more and more because of the machines and everything else, this is the way it reacts. It used to be 
You had to wait for retest. You had, you know what I mean? Always off a low. A market would always retest. So what you have now all the time is you get this and everybody's waiting for some sort of retest here and it doesn't come. You know, it doesn't come. It doesn't come. So what I would say is, you know, those shorter term indicators, if anything, uh, you wait for a little breather in some of the names more than anything else. Like don't chase names that are up 14 straight days for new entries. Nah, they, they overshoot. They overshoot, Q. They overshoot, you know? Because you, here's the thing. Think about what we're talking about, okay? You have, again, an outfit considered the smartest money on the, on the street who have removed their hedges and are naked long, okay? And on top of that, you have everybody that moves markets underexposed right now to equities. Do you think any of these players that are going to be looking for exposure that are running – you think Niners are going to prevent them from doing it, right? They they don't want to chase to begin with. They have to. You know, they have to. Now, you get into um, a range-bound market or a correction, or you get into um, rallies, bull trends that are longer in the tooth, right, late stage, then you pay more attention to these things because – Players are fully invested, right? So you get sell signals, you get a niner, you better off you wait for something like this, right? You get a niner, you better off waiting for something like this. But when you when you got when you're coming out of periods where there's no exposure, like I said, they just they need to put on they need to put on positions. They have no choice. They got to cover head. They got to cover shorts. You know. So that's like. What we've seen in this rally here now has been all unwind of hedges and shore cover. All this, okay? That's what we've seen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and depends on, on what type of player you are. You know what I'm saying? Depends on, on your style. But if you're a day trader, right, if you're a short-term trader, these fades that you get intraday, you see, like, look at this, what happened today, right? Okay. And again, it's never, it's not always, I'm not saying it's ever easy, but this is what went on today, okay? You had, where are we here? This is the beginning of the day, so I'm looking at the right chart right here, right? So you had the um, markets push up overnight, right? These are futures. So forget the gap up, um, but you had markets push up overnight, okay? Then early morning, right, you had this, okay? If you, like, if you see the type of sweeper activity we're seeing, especially into the bigger names that move markets, when you see them bombing Apple, Tesla, NVIDIA, you know, and you have a fade like this, this is what you're waiting for right now. You understand? This is what you're waiting for, for if you're a short-term trader. Those are the entries you're waiting for. You know, bigger picture-wise, I mean, right now what I would do is focus more on names. If you're not, if you have no exposure right now, right, I get it. Like, you don't want to chase this right now, right? So, I would wait to see what a rest looks like, right? It might look like this. And if we see sweepers bombing the shit out of it, it's probably over with. Yeah, you guys, exactly. Good call. We were talking about that today. You got quarter end and that's what's holding these names, right? Up, oh, they're buying these names. So that's what, a couple days? Um. Oh, reason for the move? Yeah, in in the market, or are you talking about in these names, Nina? I mean, could could be part of a catalyst, but you know, if anything, right now, um, it was supposed to be a bearish. It was supposed to be bearish. This um, end of the quarter rebalancing 
because bonds got hit. Pension funds have to rebalance to the fixed income side, if anything. So that would be a bearish thesis. You know, but like the apples of the world and stuff like that, um, if that's the point you're making, I agree that you get quarter end into the leaders, you get quarter end. Like those are the names they want to show on their books, right? If they don't have exposure. So yes, I think so. I don't know. I don't have really concrete information to prove it. Uh, credit, that it might have updated. Let's see. Oh, you can get it on here too. Is it updated on here? Let's see. Oh, this is the um, similar. This is the triple B one. What's the date on here? 28th. Today's what? I don't even know the date. 29th? Let's see the uh, CDX. Did that up there yet? Oh, it updated the CDX. Uh, it's not, it's just chopping around. So here, let me post it. The credit default swaps. Credit default swaps. Yeah, that, that's another uh, pressure that came off the table here. We didn't even talk about that today, but there's no reason to talk about it, to be honest. You know, if it becomes an issue again, then, uh, but even if it became an issue, if we got the Sharpie signal, it's, it's not gonna spook me out of it. Where is it? Here. So what would be really, I don't know if it's capable of happening though, Sean, what do you think? Can it roll over again? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it could roll over because this was a rigged market by the Fed. You know what I mean? And you got the Fed unrigging the market. So what's more likely to happen is kind of like a choppier, slower, maybe slight up grind, right? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm being honest. Yeah, I really don't know. But what we didn't want, obviously, was this to continue, right? That's what we were worried about because, yeah, good. If I could draw a line, it'd be nice. But we didn't. We didn't want the the uptrend, higher lows, higher highs to continue. Um, because the price action will look like this. But you see, kind of now, like I don't even is it move is it moving with the price action? No, right, Sean? Because look, it went up yesterday. I think. Yep. See, because it, it doesn't matter now, right? And it, here it was tick for tick, wasn't it? Like clockwork. Because it, it's not really a concern right now. For whatever reason. You know, for whatever reason. Uh, but to be honest, if, if, if we got the Sharpie bull signal even into elevated credit spreads, I would get long. That wouldn't prevent me from getting long. You know, because again, I I would be betting that Sharpies knew something about the future that obviously I don't know. I'm just seeing what's happening now. You know, we forget sometimes like all, all that you and I are looking at in the market is either what's happening right now or has already happened in the past. And you're going to realize, whether you like it or not, that that means nothing in the market, right? It means nothing about any future performance. No? Am I right? It means nothing. Right? Looking in the past or looking at what's currently happened means nothing. You know, and that's all we look at, right? That's all we're taught to look at in this game. Charts, balance sheets. That's all, right? 
That's why, you know, you got good earnings and stocks sell off. And a lot of retail players are scratching their heads like, what the fuck is going on? They just beat the street by a dollar, you know, because it, it doesn't mean anything. It all, it's all based on what's going to happen in the future or what the market thinks is going to happen in the future. Right? It prices in everything. So now, like, the Fed is talking about raising rates aggressively. The market's been pricing that in. Doesn't mean anything anymore. You know, now, if the market thought that these rate hikes were going to destroy the economy, hence the market, the market would be selling off, would be in a nosedive right now. You know? So, and, 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 and the market's not always right. The market's not always right, uh, but it, it adjusts, you know, aggressively. It's usually right, though. There's a big thing now going on, and the Fed really screwed things up because they rigged the game. You know, who's right, the bond market or the equity market, right? The bond market is signaling recession, and the equity market right now, well, I, I don't know what the hell the equity market is signaling. I'll be honest with you guys. I have no idea. <laughs> you guys... Have a guess what the equity market could be signaling? It, it is. It is. Yeah, 8C. I, but that's, I can't see it any other way, 8C, because the macro, the, the, the information that I have access to on the macro side doesn't tell me anything. You know what I mean? About the future. Like, was it? Yeah, I just, you know, I'm always, always confused. I'm always, I'm always unsure. What are those things doing, Cal? I haven't really looked at them since um, We've rallied a bit. Let me see here. H Y G J and K and L Q D, right? Uh, let's see. L Q D. That's corporates. Oh, they popped today. Yesterday they didn't even pop, right? They lagged. They usually tell the story. Um, COVID's a bad example because the Fed rigged the game. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. How about 2018? Yeah, this looks a little uh, more realistic, right? The Fed cow bought HYG, didn't they? I'm not even exaggerating. I think they bought HYG. And LQD? So that's where the COVID bottom. No, they bought HYG too, Frank. I'm almost positive. I think it was both. I'm almost positive. You know, so here's like, um, this was the 2018 low, um, which is a little more cleaner because you didn't have the Fed's hand in the cookie jar. Um, and you got a bottom at the end of the year. And then look, so usually... They tell the story um, if they can hold lows, you know? Usually. But, you know, there's so much shit to look at, guys. We, we, you have smoke coming out of your ears, no? I don't know about you guys. Make me dizzy at this point. And as long as I'm in this game, my head spins looking at all this shit. You know what I like to look at it? I like to look, listen, I enjoy looking at it. I love to look at this stuff when I don't have any signal off my, off my stuff. You know that? Like, I love to look at all this stuff when Sharpies are fully hedged. But like when Sharpies 
are all in. I couldn't give a rat's ass about LQD. I'm being honest. You know, I really couldn't. Later, Ed. Like when, when sharpies get long, I don't. I don't look at it. I don't really care about any of this stuff. I'm being honest with you. I just I enjoy following all this stuff, but as far as being actionable, it really doesn't do a whole a whole lot for me. On the bullish side, yeah, because you could. One thing I learned in this game, you could always find something. You know what I mean? If you want to be a bull or a bear, there's always something out there. Okay, exactly, exactly. Later, Lourdes. Have a good night. There's always something you can sure up your bias. It's true. It's true, though. I always something. Like if I want to be a bear, I can I can find bear stuff right now, right? I want to be a bull, I can find bull stuff. And you'll notice, like a lot of people on Twitter, they they do that a lot. Like when they're bullish, they look for just bullish things to continuously post. And the bearish stuff, they, they leave out. Yep, confirmation bias. Later, Pete. I'm going to wrap it up too. I'm exhausted. These past two days, I had, you know, I had a pretty easy schedule for the last few months. I think um, that's why I'm exhausted the last two days. Yep. All right. So listen, we have an idea, right, of where, how to lean, what to look for. Um, and I'm telling you, that's a, that's a huge boost, just that alone. The rest will come to us. The rest will come to us as it goes, especially with the flow, especially with flow involved. Tie from the shopping spree. Exactly. Exactly. Guys, always a pleasure. All right. Good luck the rest of the week. And I'll see a lot of you manana. Thank you. You too. Have a good night, guys.